It's been a very busy weekend for the Honorable Minister for Works, Power and Housing. He's visiting local meter manufacturers and canvassing for over 3 million power consumers to come into smart metering scheme. That gap, he believes, can be bridged by local manufacturers. If you look at the number of telephones that we use in this country, and if we just pause to ask ourselves how many was even just assembled here, and the opportunities that were lost, and uh, I am determined uh, to use the, the responsibilities of my office to ensure that we don't repeat that kind of mistake. And the signs that that will not happen is evident from the young men and women you saw in the factory uh, working uh, in a factory in Lagos, in Nigeria, as against what has happened in the past where all of those who made those telephones were working in factories in China. Overhead costs, stars for an exchange and low patronage from the 11 distribution companies are some of the challenges faced by these entities. We really do need um, Forex. It's actually posing to be our biggest problem alongside uh, local financing um, at a single digit that would reflect or be cost reflective to what we are doing at the moment. We cannot be borrowing at double digit, high double digit rates. Um, it would automatically increase the price of the meter. Already as it is, Nigerians are struggling with being able to buy those meters, even the discos themselves. So imagine doubling the price of a meter that already costs 65,000 naira or a meter that already costs uh, 40 something thousand naira, um, having to double or triple the price. It would almost mean that we will not be able to meet uh, the metering gap that already exists in the country. The minister is however optimistic that the federal government will continue to create a platform where industry players can reach a compromise through persuasion that will engender massive rollout of smart meters, especially locally manufactured that consummated he moves to Apapa for a stakeholders meeting over the terrible state of Apapa Ejera bridge that has become a cause for worry he describes the level of damage on some sections of the bridge as an emergency situation that requires urgent actions budgetary constraints notwithstanding there are contractors who have we have instructed immediately under our emergency procurement rules to go and assess it and design a solution which our engineers in-house will then look at and validate the best of the methods that are proposed in order to be able to, to, to restore it. So we're on top of it. This is the level of devastation on this bridge that has been open in the last 40 years to traffic. And so as a matter of emergency, so that we don't have a devastation or a disaster in our hand, the Minister of works for and housing has ordered that from midnight today this bridge will be closed down to traffic a palliative measure will commence immediately while engineering processes will all be undertaken to determine what permanent solution will be brought to this bridge we intend to put a support under the bridge then put a steel plate on top to cover this hole then we can open it for light traffic while repair world will now start but meanwhile, because of the nature of the distress, we are starting from the scratch by carrying out studies to know the solution to this problem. Because JB did not design this bridge or any other contractor. This bridge was designed and built by GoFanti. They are no longer in Nigeria. So it's like we are starting from the scratch to find a solution. While the bridge is shut to traffic, the service lane by Leventis will serve as an alternative route to allow repair work on this 40-year-old Apapa Ijara bridge. Olu Phillips, Channels Television News.